in social care on the map. And I think it is a combined effort that will do that. Um, but resisting and attacking the issues, it's, I don't think it's the way forward. We need to stop focusing on the negative and focus on the positive. Tea with Toby, 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 tea with Toby. Hi, I'm Cameron from Smooth Digital and welcome to Tea with Toby, the show where we ask and answer the questions playing in the minds of the care sector's business leaders. This week's episode is sponsored by Everlife Technologies and we'd like to thank Google for allowing us to use their podcasting studio. So as always, let's kick off the show with a few words from our marketing strategy director, Toby Ali Usman. Hi, now for those of you that are new to the show, here at Smooth Digital, our ultimate aim is to help care businesses maximise their ability to provide the very best care in their communities. Now, we understand there's a number of challenges you face when it comes to growth, but we want this to be the place where you can sit back, enjoy a cup of tea, and listen to a growth-focused conversation. With that being said, we would like to welcome our guest, Anushka Farouk. Welcome, Anushka. Welcome. <laughs> so, just before we start and get into the real meat of the podcast, could you maybe tell us a little bit about your background and area of expertise in the care sector? Sure. Thank you for having me, Toby and Cameron. Uh, my name is Anishka Farouk, and I'm from Every Life Technologies, and we're the creators of PASS, which is a digital care management software, digital, digital care planning software. Mm-hmm. We'll come on to that. The differences shortly, hopefully. Um, and my role at Every Life is um, a, I'm the director of market engagement, which means that we, um, that my role is to engage with the market as much as possible, and so um, where possible, try and understand our customers and inform our product growth and our product development, um, and also um, help to understand what the issues might be out there in the sector as well, and and again so that we can be better equipped to help solve some of those problems. Brian, well, I'm looking forward to it. So, without further ado, Toby, let's take it away and let's jump straight into it. So, the question I've got for you is there are a number of owners out there who probably want to take the jump from a rostering system to a care management system. Now, I've been to the events, there's so many different providers out there. The question I've got for you is how can we make this less confusing and what sort of questions should these owners be asking when they're looking for care management software? So firstly, let's just be clear on the word care management software, as I had a little bit of a stumble there at the beginning. Care management software encompasses quite a broad spectrum of of software solutions. Mm -hmm. You've got your rostering systems, which often are classed as care management software, as well as your digital care planning solutions. So some um, the misconception is that the people have gone digital or they've done what they need to do because they have a rostering system in place. But that's actually a very important part of the journey, but only part of the journey. So the rostering system is the piece of work, uh, the piece of software that um, logistically manages your staff, gets your staff to and from their shift or their visit, um, and manages the HR and the invoicing. But what happens after they arrive is how is what a digital care planning solution will will look at and will, will record and monitor what happens at the visit, and ultimately look at the quality of care being delivered. Brilliant. So. What is what ha- what does happen next? What does happen next? So um, yeah, and and to to answer your initial question, you know, what do we do with all of these different choices, and how mm-hmm. do we choose? So firstly, to to know the difference between the two is, is yeah. the first step. Um, but also, I do think it's really important to know that there are loads of flavors of digital care planning and rostering out there for a reason, because care isn't a one size fits all, and we have so many different varieties of care settings, um, and not all. T- care planning solutions are going to work for everyone and also rostering solutions are going to work for everyone so it is really we're very we're very fortunate that we have so much to choose from so care managers ought to just take advantage of the vast choice that we have um, and start asking the right questions if you're ready to make that leap start asking the the possible um, software providers the right questions make sure that you trust that they are resilient robust piece of software, I mean, the last thing you need is for something to, uh, your system to, to break down or to, to fail on you. Um, it's knowing that it's going to give you the types of reporting that you require as a manager, the types of alerting that you, you want as a manager, um, the type of ease of use that you want for your care workers. It needs to be something that the entire business can get along with and partner with harmoniously, 
rather than it being an additional piece of work or added stress in any way because that's actually counterproductive. Mm. So you just mentioned there um, care managers, care workers. The big question is change. I know when we're implementing software into our company, company and we're a digital company, there's always a bit of friction. And the question I've got for you is, how do you feel these care staff actually feel about the change that they'll have to go through? So um, obviously change is a difficult thing. As human beings, we, we often find that change um, can cause some anxiety. And I think um, it's really important that we don't lose sight of why we're doing this. It's not to create additional work. Um, and I think one of the questions you should be asking your software provider is that, about that change management piece and make sure that a good software provider will support that entire change management process from implementation through to go live and beyond that and have that an ongoing support so that your staff don't feel as if they're, they're doing something new. It should be something that's actually assisting them to do what they do best and, and give them more time to do what they do best and free up time that they would normally be, be spending on admin. So really, the change management piece is part of that responsibility should be on the software provider to, to really reassure the care manager and the staff that this is not... Um, this, this shouldn't be causing any anxiety, it should be here to help you. Um, but also never losing sight of what the end goal is because ultimately it's about improving the quality of care that we're delivering and, and evidencing the great work of our care workers. Because uh, until we're actually able to show what they're doing and how they're delivering care, then we're not able to, to really um, to, to, um, to, to monitor and make improvements to what's, what's happening. Um, and everybody's always concerned with, with proving to the regulator that they're doing a good job. And this is really the way to do that, because you can more efficiently, more effectively, um, and more sophisticatedly show the information um, about what's happening on a care visit or within a care home. So taking a step back as well, as a sector, I feel there's a lot of change. <laughs> we're, we're in change in times. As a sector, how do you feel we can sort of encourage change moving forward? So, I mean, technology is one of those, and as I said before, um, the, the CQC in particular have really made some, some strong efforts to move towards change, and I think it's important to recognise that they are promoting that change. And obviously it is really evidencing, it's that piece of work, it's being, for them to be able to see that we can aggregate lots of data and show reports and, and, and provide a greater level of transparency that is, is important for us to move forwards because we can't move forwards unless we see where we're at. And, and so data is important for that. But change as a sector, yeah, that's a tricky one because I think we all recognise that there are a number of things that need to change in the sector. But the issue is that we, I think, um, and I'll be careful how I put this, but I think that if we're constantly attacking or resisting the issues, then we're not actually moving forwards. And, and you know, a number of years have gone by and we're still talking about some of the same issues. Um, but I, I do think we're in a period of change right now and I'm quite optimistic that we are in a place where we're, things are changing and people have the right energy. There are lots of individual change initiatives going on that if we, you know, our combined efforts can really make that change possible. There's a great video about embracing change which Toby allowed us to watch as a team. Was it? Find the cheese. Get Where's, my cheese? Where's my cheese? Actually, yeah. it was originally a book. It's a great book, um, and it's and we can link that to yeah. the, the show notes. Animated on YouTube, and it, everyone should watch yeah. it and mull it over, and yeah. it will change your perspective on. I don't want to. I don't want to explain it because the video will do a better job at uh, taking it in. But I think if you're ever concerned about change or always doing something a certain way, watch that video, and it will make yeah. you reflect and realize. Okay. We've always got to be, you know, pushing forward and there's always a different way of doing something. Exactly. Yeah, and I think with social care as it is now and, and the number of change initiatives that we do have going on, the only reason we're, we are beginning to see some change happen is because we're all combining our efforts and I think that's a really important point. It's not any one of these things alone. Um, I mean, the Care Badge is one of those change initiatives. There are a number of other initiatives, the recruitment campaign from the Department of Health and Social Care, really trying to drive awareness around recruitment and that social care is a great place to work. The rest of the world don't seem to know that yet and we need to. The rest of the UK don't seem to know that yet. And these sorts of initiatives are what's driving that um, awareness. 
And then there are a bunch of charities like um, the Care Workers Charity, NACUS, that are driving the positive message and supporting care workers. And, and hopefully that alongside the other organisations that are raising raising awareness around the illnesses, like dementia and Alzheimer's Society, Dementia Friends, all of these things are actually in support of making, putting social care on the map. Mm. And I think it is a combined effort that will do that. Um, but resisting and attacking the issues, it's, I don't think it's the way forward. We need to stop focusing on the negative and focus on the positive. Mm. So it's good you touched on that, actually, and it'll be wrong for me not to ask. Mm. I am a supporter of the Care Badge, and we've all got our Care Badge mm. here. But what do you say to the naysayers that say, the care badge, is it really going to make a difference? Well, we expected to, that we were going to have some sceptics. I mean, it, it's a badge, and it's not, it, it's not physically or appears to be doing anything on its own. But as I've just said, it's a combination of all of our efforts that will make this something. And I'm really pleased to say that almost, um, no, just a, almost a year in, and we have almost 100,000 badges in circulation. So those naysayers are a minority, mm. and, and I'm really pleased to say that because actually it's, it's that resisting and attacking again that's not really pushing us forward, but if we're shoulder to shoulder, you know, wearing our care badges, supporting care, having pride in what we do, and then there's national recruitment campaigns going on to show that it's a great place to work, and we've got um, other great organisations lobbying and rallying towards um, a better, stronger voice for care in the political arenas, etc., it's all of that, that, that whole combined effort that will actually push towards these boundaries. But it's only together that we can actually break through them. And it's, uh, I agree, I think it's unity as well. I remember when I was on a, a train from Liverpool Street uh, on the way home and I saw someone wearing a care badge. Mine wasn't visible at the time, but I kind of felt like, do I go up and talk to them? Or, um, but it's kind of like there's a badge, there's the NHS logo, and now there's the care badge that people can recognise and feel together as well. It's lovely to hear that because I think, you know, just not even a year in and the care badge, it's got an identity. The care sector has an identity with this badge and I think that it will just continue to grow. We just need to keep doing what we're doing and that means every single organisation that's working towards change, we all need to be doing this to support one another um, rather than highlighting the issues around care. Obviously the issues still need to be, we need to be aware of them, but actually leaning towards them is the only way we push past those bar barriers. Brilliant. So if anyone wants to reach out to you from a care badge perspective or um, every life technologies perspective, what's the best way that they can reach out to you? LinkedIn, Twitter, um, the Every Life Technologies website, you can email me through there and contact us page. Um, um, and at every, well, pretty much all the events that we are going at the moment, we're, we're out and about. As I say, my role is um, market engagement. And one of the things that we like to do as a business is be out there speaking to you because it's important for um, us to be engaging with the, the, the care sector so that we understand what the issues are so that we can build that into our product. Um, and it informs the, the whole of our business. And we feel as though we're more connected. If we're more connected to you, we're more connected to, to doing the right things for our product and for our business. Yeah. She'll be out there. Good. So well, we'll put all those links into the show notes anyway, so everyone can find them nicely set out. I think that's everything for today. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. And we will see you in the next Tea with Toby. See you next week.